Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, my lesson is on reflections, the mathematical flip. So today we're going to identify reflections and we are going to reflect figures in the X and Y axis on the coordinate plane. Here's what I'd like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson. How can you tell when a transformation is a reflection? And what effect does a reflection have on congruence? So this is the second video in this playlist on transformations. The first was on translations, which are slides. And this is the transformation that is a reflection. They do stand alone. You don't need to have watched the first video to understand the second, but just keep in mind that this is the second video in the transformations playlist. So let's review some vocabulary before I start. A transformation describes how a two-dimensional figure moves on a coordinate plane. A transformation is a change in location that occurs by sliding, turning, flipping, or changing size. So again, this is the second video in the playlist, and today we're going to be talking about flipping. Flipping, mathematically, is called a reflection, which is a change in location by flipping over a line of symmetry or a line of reflection. The figure flips, quote unquote flips, reflects left or right or up or down over the line of reflection. You can have a reflection that happens over the y-axis, which would make it go either to the left or to the right. Or you could reflect over the x-axis, which means you're reflecting up, over, or down, below. The x or y-axis would then be the line of reflection. Remembering that a reflection is always a congruent image. So anytime you can call something a transformation that's a reflection, just like we learned with translations, the image must be congruent. Reviewing that an image is what we call the figure after the transformation. And we label this image using this apostrophe sign and we read it in math as prime. So for example, this is what it would look like. Triangle ABC has been transformed to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Meaning these three vertices are the reflected or translated or transformed image. So the original figure, the image. And also keeping in mind that what we're going to talk about today is reflections and reflections always have a congruent image. So congruence is when two figures have the same size and shape. All corresponding sides and all corresponding angles will have the same measure. So they will be equivalent figures, congruence. Let's talk about reflections in our real world. You see these when you're out in nature. So imagine this mountainscape, and we're going to note that this would be our line of reflection. And if we look at the mirror image, it has been flipped over this line of reflection into the water. Understanding that these are symmetrical, the image is the same. It's just a reflection of the actual mountains. So in the water, the reflection is the same size as the original. It's not distorted. It is exactly as it is. So it's been quote unquote flipped or it's showing its reflection in the water. Now we have a little cat, kitten, in front of a mirror. This will be our line of reflection because it is where the mirror starts. So the mirror image of the cat in the mirror is your reflection. So over the line of reflection and noting that the cat is symmetrical. So we see the same size, this congruency here. And you can see that it's just been flipped. So imagine folding a piece of paper or a photo or something on this line. They need to identically match up. So if you held it up to a light or a window, there would be an overlap there. They would not be one side that would be bigger than the other. So when you fold, if you folded something on a piece of paper, so when we graph on the coordinate plane, if you folded it on the X or Y axis, whichever one you reflected over, they need to be exact images. So your turn. Is this blue figure 
a reflection of the green figure. And how do you know? Let's see how you did. So it is indeed, it's been flipped or reflected over this line of reflection. You can see that the figures are congruent. If you actually had this on physical paper, if you folded on this line, this would be on top of the green would be on top of the blue. The other thing you want to look for is that this vertice is the same distance from the line of reflection as it's corresponding. And you can see this is the short side of the trapezoid and it's the same distance from this line of reflection as the short side of the blue. So the long side of the trapezoid is the same distance from the line of reflection as the original figure. So these are congruent images and it is indeed a reflection. Okay, try this one. Is the blue figure a reflection of the green figure and how do you know? Let's see how you did. So the answer here would be no, because we can see that these figures, even though they are congruent, the blue figure has been translated. It has been slid, slid down, it vertically translated down. So it's just been a little bit of shift or a slide. There was no reflection. If you folded this on this line of reflection, it would not overlap, okay? It would have this long side and this long side, this long side is very close to the line of reflection, and this long side is further away. So the short side right here is very close to the line of reflection, but much further away here. So we can tell from that that it is not a reflection. Your turn again. Is this blue figure a reflection of the green figure, and how do you know? Let's see how you did. So here, our answer would be no. It'd be no because these figures are not congruent. Therefore, we can't even consider the fact of whether or not it's a reflection because we know that with a reflection, the images need to be the same size and shape after the reflection. Try another one, please. Is this blue figure a reflection of the green figure, and how do you know? Let's see how you did. So, it is indeed flipped over this line. So we have a diagonal line, which is okay. If we folded this piece of paper, if it were on paper, and we folded it on the line of reflection, it would line up. So if we check this right angle in that triangle and this right angle in this triangle, we can see that they're the same distance from the line of reflection. Same thing here, same distance, same distance, and the figures are congruent. So therefore we can conclude that it is a reflection. Now let's talk about reflecting in the coordinate plane. So here we have our X and Y axis forming our coordinate plane. I can tell that this is the original figure because it's A, triangle ABC, and I can tell that this is the reflected image or the transformed image because it's A prime, B prime, C prime. So it's showing me with this that it's been flipped or reflected over the Y axis. So you can see that the vertex C and the vertex C prime are the same distance from the Y axis and the vertex A and A prime are also the same distance from this line of reflection. B and B prime are also the same distance from the line of reflection. So all points in the figure must reflect and be the same distance from the line of reflection. All right, let's look at reflections now in the x-axis. So first we're going to talk about, our instructions are, we're going to reflect in the x-axis. So we're gonna identify, I like to have my students even pencil mark that or trace it, do something. Mentally note what axis you're reflecting over. That will help. So we're reflecting over the x-axis, which means this figure is going to be in the third quadrant when I'm done. It's going to flip down over the x-axis. So if we keep in mind 
that we know that every vertex of this triangle needs to be the same distance just below the line, from the line. Algebraically, we can talk about the transformation of a reflection as an ordered pair and its change or transformation. The x-coordinate, when we're flipping over the x-axis, the x-coordinate stays the same. So x-axis, x-coordinate stays the same, and the y-coordinate is the opposite, which makes sense. So it's kind of anchored here by our x-axis. So this vertex A, this point right here, is the ordered pair negative 6, 6. It's going to go down instead of up. So when we graph an ordered pair, we always go to the x-coordinate first, which this is not going to change. To graph a point below the line, what's going to change is the y-coordinate's value. So it's going to become the opposite. So you can see that the ordered pair x-coordinate over the x-axis stays the same, and the y-coordinate is the opposite. Or you could just say that this point is six points above the x-axis, so A prime is going to be 6 below. So we graph it. Now we can go and we do every point individually. So B is one unit above. So B prime is going to be one unit below. C is two units above. So it's going to go directly and be two units below. And there we have it. A prime, B prime, C prime is our reflected triangle. Noting that this image is congruent to the original figure, since every point moved the same distance. Your turn. I would like you to reflect this image in the x-axis. Good luck. All right, let's see how you did. So the first thing I'm going to do is note that I'm reflecting over the x-axis. So I've highlighted that here. So that means that this triangle is flipping down over the x-axis. So we're going to start with the a. We're going to flip over. This is coordinate 3, 4. So I know the x-coordinate is going to stay the same and the y-coordinate will be the opposite. Or you could have looked at it that this is 4 units above, 4 units below. Then we go to B, two units above, two units below. C, six units above, down to six units below. Connect our points. And let's look at our three vertices here, our original figure, and our transformed image, noting that the X coordinates of each point are the same and the Y coordinates are all opposites. So a point of reference for you to check your work. Now let's talk about reflecting in the y-axis. So I have my original figure here, and I am going to reflect it or flip it over the y-axis. So this is going to reflect to the right over this y-axis and be in the first quadrant when I'm done. So when I do this, I'm looking to highlight this y-axis. That's my line of reflection. And we're going to flip over, and remember, every vertice of this triangle is going to be the same distance on the image. When we talk about this algebraically, because we are flipping over the y-axis, the y-coordinates are going to stay the same. When you flip over the y-axis, the y-coordinate does not change, and the x-coordinate becomes the opposite. So if we look at point A, this is negative 6, 6. It's 6 units from the y-axis. Flipping it over, it will be six units in the opposite direction, giving us the ordered pair 6, 6. Noting that the y coordinates are the same and the x coordinates are opposites. So then we're going to go graph the b. It is six units from the y axis. So now we're going to graph it, the image, six points or units away from the y axis. C is three units and three units. So now we have our image and it's congruent to our original figure. We can check that they have all been moved the same distance. So your turn. I would like you to reflect this figure in the y-axis. 
Good luck. Let's see how you did. So we note that we're flipping over the y-axis. This is our line of reflection. And we're going to make sure that every vertice in this triangle is the same distance on the opposite side of the y-axis. So we note that this ordered pair, this vertice A is 3, 4. Because we're going over the y-axis, the y-coordinate will stay the same and the x will be opposite. Or you could look at it that A is 1, 2, 3 units to the right. That means the image's A needs to be 1, 2, 3 from the y-axis on the opposite side. So now we're going to keep every vertice the same distance so that we don't change congruency here. So B is 7 units to the right. B prime is going to be 7 units to the left of the y-axis. C is 5 units to the right of the y-axis. So C prime is going to be 5 units to the left. And there we have it, our image A prime, B prime, C prime. So we can check our three vertices, our original, noting that we flipped over the Y, so all the Y coordinates should be the same, and they are, and all the X coordinates should be the opposite. So a fun note for you is to mentally note that when you flip over the x-axis, the x-coordinates do not change. When you flip over the y-axis, the y-coordinates do not change. Here's one for you to try. Now remember all the rules I taught you and give this a shot. Good luck. Let's see how you did. So I'm going to take one point at a time. So the first thing I want to do is reflect the A over the X axis. So I'm noting what I'm reflecting over. So we are four units below. We're going to be four units above. B is two units below, going to be two units above. And C is one unit above. So now it's going to go one unit below. So I hope that didn't trick you. If you do one vertice at a time, then this is okay. They will overlap like this. Imagine though, if you folded this, if this was on paper and you folded it, it would still line up. It's just you have part of one triangle above and part of it below. I hope you enjoyed this lesson today and found it helpful in learning reflections, our mathematical flip. I hope you'll come back and join me for future videos. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.